appointments. So hopefully you guys are going on them and meeting with them. And now even, you know, it's more most important just with the listings being so tight and that's what everyone's you know, trying to get that, you know, you might be competing against multiple offers that you're really bringing um, your A game. So that is what we're going to talk. I also just want to introduce myself. I guess I, my name is Karen Smith. I've been licensed since 2015, early 2015. I've always been with Keller Williams Capital Partners. Um, and now I have a team or the Smart Move group here. There are four licensed agents and um, that's it. We love, we love what we're doing. And I love listening. That's like my listening appointments is, are what I live for. So um, that's, I think if I had to say my favorite part of the job is the, the listing appointment. It's been that way since day one. So Heather, you guys want to just kind of go down and introduce yourselves and just where you're, I mean, I think it's, we may be co-oping together someday in the future. So I think it's always good to introduce when you're- Sure. Uh, my name is Heather Gott um, and I've been licensed for three years. I'm on the Columbus team with Sue and Patrick and Aaron and Mary and Terry um, and Jean. And um, we love it. Um, it's like a family on that team. So um, yeah, having a lot of fun. Um, and I have mostly been a buyer's agent. So I'm starting to dip my toes into the world of listings. Awesome. The, and, and you're at Capital Partners, but I think there's some people yes. in, from Excel on here. So just, oh, to, gotcha. just so we yep. know. So Vanessa. Hello, my name is Vanessa Williams. I'm with Excel. I'm actually at the King's Lincoln office and um, I've only been licensed this is probably about a month all the way. So I'm just taking everything in, learning and learning people. Awesome. We love that. That's why I joined Keller Williams too, because just the, all the training and the, the culture of learning. So I'm just continuing that. I think it's great. Mary, I don't know if we can hear you. I don't know if you, you want to try it and I can stop you if we can't hear you. All right, you can try this. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I have only been licensed since December of 2020, so I'm still fairly new as well and mainly dipping into buyer's agent stuff right now, but I do go to listing appointments with my rainmaker. Okay, what team are you on? I'm sorry, um, the Tomlinson Group. We're here in Chillicothe of Southern Ohio. Okay, great. Awesome. Good. Welcome. Okay. Is it Buffy? My eyes are going bad. And it's really Patterson. Hi, good morning. It is Buffy. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I'm with like Keller really Williams. small print. Sorry. Go ahead. No worries. I'm with uh, Keller Williams Excel also. And um, I um, also run the King Lincoln office. And I'm actually, I've been licensed for a number of years. I'm a broker, but I just like to sit in on training. I'm fairly new to Keller Williams and um, I have a lot of newer agents in my office. And so I just like to sit in and kind of hear what's, what's happening out there. Great. So and thank you. please with the, your experience too, chime in and don't, you know, share your experiences too, as we go along through this. So I just want this to be very casual. And Amanda. Hi, I'm with uh, Keller Williams Excel Realty out of Westerville. Um, I've been licensed for all of three. This actually might be my fourth week. Oh, wow. Uh, awesome. I'm part of a group, uh, the Sherlock, the, excuse me, the Shoe Law Group. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, okay, so we are, you guys, hopefully you've been to the other Ignite classes because I think that there's a natural flow as far as lead gen and, you know, everything that else has progressed up to um, the actual appointment. So that's what we're, we will be talking today. So today the goal really will be to um, discuss um, creating the listing presentation and securing it. So we'll even, I'll go into command and show you where you can find the in designs and create your own listing appointment. I've actually, um, when Command came out with a listing appointment, went back and changed my listing appointment that I previously had and, and used the, uh, the one in Command because I thought it was, it kind of flipped it where my previous one was all, I started with about me and the team and what we do and like less about them in their house. 
So, and you'll get, when we get in there, you'll see. So I really personally like it and use it. And that will be, you know, my goal today to at least show, share that with you and share with you um, what I do on a listing appointment. And then just kind of, we can, you know, answer any questions from there. Um, is everybody in command? Amanda, are you, do you have a login? Yep, I'm all set. You've been, okay, good, good. Just want to make sure that, because I would encourage as we get to that point that you, you know, as I'm talking and showing you too, you guys can multitask and go in, into there, you know, and poke around. And if you have any trouble, maybe we can um, get through, you know, I can help you get through it and uh, navigate that too. Um, okay, so let me go down. I also have to, oops, hold please. What is this page down? Let's there we go. Why right, hold on? I don't, oh, I just have to hit that. Oops, how do I go back? You can tell it's been a while since I've been in um, page up. There you go. Okay, we're going to talk about like what sellers want, um, and really how that affects your you know the conversation you have with them. So um, we'll look at what sellers say they want and, and how that affects their conversations with them. Um, and basically that the best listing appointment you go on is really a continuation of a conversation you've already had before you even stepped in the door um, with that seller. So really talking about the all the prep work that goes into the appointment as well. Uh, but before we get there, I think this is, this is a very important slide. This is according to NAR, National Association of Realtors, 2019. Um, Sorry, I need to move us because I'm in the way of my own. Where does let me? Oh, there we go. Okay. So 39% of age or of sellers found their agent. Um, they either knew their listing agent or were referred to their listing agent by a friend, neighbor, or relative. And then 27% of sellers. Um, they were they had used their listing agent previously to buy or sell a home. So 70% of appointments that agents are going on, I would say are warm appointments. They're sphere or past client relationship, um, which is great. I mean, that's so, so what is that? How do you guys interpret that, those numbers? And what does that mean to you? Anyone? That our yeah, sphere is Buffy. Really oh, go ahead. Sorry, Buffy. Our sphere is very important. Yes, if nothing else, to, yeah, you're not like hitting your heads against the wall trying to call for sale by owners or in expires. And by all means, do that too. But we all should be contacting and staying in touch with our database and having a systematic. And I know this was covered in lead gen probably, but. I mean, that's kind of eye-opening, that 70%. And of that, um, only 75% or 75% of sellers interview more than one agent. So 75% only interview one agent for the job of selling their house. And 15% don't talk to two before selecting one. So really you have to go in gangbusters in, and, and uh, seal the deal there. And I would say also say, I never take for granted, even on those warm leads, if it's a past client referral or a past coworker from a previous life and I'm you know going in there, I, I bring my A game to every listing appointment. I never, I never go in casually because in my opinion, this is typically one of the largest trans financial transactions of people's lives and I don't take it lightly and I, I never wanna make it seem you know casual or you know, lighthearted that, you know, I, that's my personal style as I go on taking it, every, you know, very seriously prepare with my numbers, um, same script that I would use on anyone. Any, Buffy, what were you going to say? I was just going to say sphere. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So and then this is what sellers want. Um, from their agents that they're working with. And again, this was from um, NAR 2019, and I'm sure the numbers haven't changed, but 21% 1 
Um, <clears throat> they want help, uh, sorry, marketing their home. Makes sense. 20% uh, want help uh, with a time frame, making sure it sells in time. 19% um, they want to make sure it's priced competitively and want, want help with the pricing. 16% want advice on home improvements and what to do to get that sale price. 13% want help finding a buyer. And only 11% stated they wanted help with the paperwork, inspections, and negotiations. You know, I mean, I think even though that's only 11%, I, I feel like every seller, I mean, that's kind of a, a given that, that that is our fiduciary duty to help them with all that. And that's what's going to also, I mean, I wouldn't take that lightly. That's what's going to give you that repeat business um, with your sellers and the referred business and stuff like that is that that help with all that paperwork and negotiations and the care that you put into it. Process to listing. So um, this is, you know, you've talked to someone and they've expressed, um, you know, maybe, maybe you're calling, you've met someone at an open house and they said that they're getting ready to, they need to sell their home. Um, I go, I always pre-qualify my sellers. So whether, um, you know, I make set up an appointment to call them on the phone you know, after that open house, I'm just using an example or if I'm calling a for sale by owner and, and talking to them about their why, I always have a um, pre-listing questionnaire in front of me to kind of get to their why, their timing, their motivation, um, talk about even like pricing. Um, but I wanted, that's why I was, we took so long setting up. I wanted to show you guys where to get a pre-listing questionnaire. Um, escape. Oh, please. Okay. I just share this with you when I um, share. Let's see where it is. Um, that's not it. Um, hold on. Oh, okay. This is it. Okay. Let me go back to. You just share the screen with this. Okay. So this is found, you guys, in Ignite Toolkit. If you go to my KW, um, I thought this, I think this is a really cool thing. I didn't know this existed until I taught this class last time. If you go to my KW and then you go to, I just searched Ignite and then I selected materials and it's called the Ignite Toolkit. Um, it has all this great information on this, on here. I'll scroll down to this, and you could just even copy this one. Hold on. Oh, pre-qualifying script. Sorry, this is, this is, I don't know how I page layout. Let's do this. This is driving me nuts. I only want one page. How am I doing this? <laughs> nope. Anybody know? Oh, well, I don't, okay, so I'm over here. If you under but, view. What? If you go under view. Thank you, that makes sense. Like this? Oh yeah, because it's print. Oh, nope, that didn't do it. Um, view, one page. There we go, thank you. Okay, so this, I mean, this toolkit has scripts, it has a bunch of stuff in here, but I noticed on the pre-qualifying, so if you don't have one, but I always have this in front of me, so if I'm you know, making a phone call, and now it's just kind of ingrained, but it really helps to even know if you should, let you know if you should go on the appointment, the listing appointment, and it will help you prepare so that you're maximizing your time, um, you know, while you're there with the seller to kind of get to their timing, their motivation, 
knowing where are they moving, just asking that simple question. Maybe you can get um, a referral out of it. If they're moving out of state, you can help them find a great agent where they're going um, or knowing that. Or if they're staying local, then there'll be a buyer as well. Um, what's motiv motivating you to move there? How soon do you have to be there? Um, if we, I, lo, I always sell this, say this question, whether on the appointment or you know in the prequal. If we sell your home in the next three days, would that pose a problem for you? Um, it just helps you, you know, all these questions to kind of dig into more of and, and listen. Just have them talk. What would happen if your home did not sell? And that would really drive out the motivation. Um, I always ask on a scale of one to ten. How motivated are you? To, how what would you where would you rank your motivation to sell your home after kind of asking all these just so that I'm very clear, you know, and I would say anything under a seven, you might question going on a listing appointment, maybe anything under a six. Um, if they're if they're just like, oh, the market's great, we just want to throw a crazy number out there and see if we can get it. Well, tell me more about that. <laughs> so, you know, that would definitely put have you going down a different set of questions than. Yes, we need to sell it and be out of our house in the next 30 days. Um, how much do you want to list your price for? Um, a question I learned a while ago, which I really like, and it de definitely seems to get um, a better answer for me at least, is Zillow says your home is worth this. What do you think about that? Um, and I genuinely get like, oh, I think that's really high, or I know that's not right, or sometimes, you know, yeah, that's what we were thinking. But at least going in, you know, um, a lot of times when I'm asking this question, it's a general, general, genuine question because I don't know. I haven't pulled comps or anything yet, but it definitely ha helps me know where their mindset is before I go on that appointment. Um, how much do you owe on the property? Because I always say I will bring a net sheet out with me. Um, either on my first visit or as a follow-up. And then that way they can know exactly what they're going to walk with, walk away with at the closing table after their, you know, loan has been paid off or any, or any loans have been paid off. Um, I'm sorry, I'm like squinting my eyes. This is small for me. So will all the decision makers be there? That's another really important question. Um, I can't, I've definitely been burned by making an appointment and coming out and one of the spouses wasn't, wasn't there. So, um, and then you're talking about either another meeting, because typically it's not, you know, when there, it, if it is a, a couple or there's more than one decision makers, both need to be there to make the, the decisions and to be able to walk away with a signed listing agreement, which is the goal of every, every uh, appointment we go on. Any questions or any other, Heather, any more, Buffy, any other, Julie, um, question, pre-qualifying questions that you guys use? No, this is, this is really good. Yeah, where is, is that document somewhere that it can be accessed? Yes, that's why, and I can have um, Elise email it out, but it's all under the MyKW, the Connect, you go the under connect under the, let me show you guys, because that's what we're here for. Um, escape, you know, it's just. Thank you, because we're, yeah, we're like really new to KW, like two months. Yes. No, let me show you. <laughs> like, I don't know where all this stuff is. Yep. Okay, let me share, where is Chrome? Okay, share. Okay, let me. Okay, I'll have to remember my logins this is the only problem. Everything's like saved on my computer. So my KW. Oh, that's, oh, it's because I was already logged in. Perfect. So everybody, um, you should have a profile set up. You just go to home here. And then you're going to go to this mic, whoops, my KW connect. And honestly, this is probably experience agents don't know about this because like I said, until I taught this new Ignite class, I didn't know these material, this toolkit was here. So I went to, oh, I looked up here. I typed in in the search bar Ignite. There we go. There we go, hold on. Okay, so then I went to 
I went to the trainer, but it's probably in the regular one. So it doesn't, and I went to course materials here. And then I went to materials. And um, what? Wait, hold on. It was just here. And this is how we pulled up that. Oh, please. Purchase course materials. We don't want to do that. Let me go back. Okay, let's try this. Just the regular night course materials. Maybe that's what I did. And then I went to materials. There we go. Okay. So ignite the regular one, not the trainer. Then I went to materials. And now I went under the student files here. And I scrolled all the way down because you see this Canada. I think the FR is France. I don't know. So I went all scroll all the way down. I saw student. Um, Here's a great script book we'll talk about later too, but that's where I found it. And then um, where's the toolkit? Ignite Toolkit 4.1. So I went here and it just opened up the Word document for me. Hello, this is Vanessa. Is there any way that you could copy and paste that um, URL that you have up on the screen into the chat box? I could just save that to my yeah, favorite. Yes, yeah, see, you, that's a great idea. I would never have, okay. So that would require me to go back. I need somebody in here helping with the Zoom while I'm trying to like navigate this and it's like doing- We're two. working together. I appreciate that, okay. All right. Hold on, it's really little. I've how do I make my screen bigger? Um, participants, hold on. Why is this? I don't see a chat box. I'm trying to go more, and then usually when I'm on these things, I do. Oh, here, I probably need, just need to make this bigger. <laughs> hold on. If you guys could see where I'm, okay. I'm gonna get Elise in here so she can help me why I, maybe it's stop sharing to do it. Ha, huh, that's it, sorry, now I can see the chat. Okay, I'm typing it in now. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, I think, um, and then part two of, I'll go back to the Ignite slide, but I guess I have to share, hold on. Share screen. Share, okay. So um, yeah, then part of that is the questionnaire Scheduling the listing appointment, I usually get, you know, when I have them on the phone, try to give them a couple options. And I think it's always best, especially it's a little different if you're working with a warm lead, you know, call them back and stuff. But if I'm on with a, someone I just met in an open house or for sale by owners, someone I don't have an established relationship with, to kind of nail that appointment down, even if they're like, um, oh, let me check with my husband. I would say, well, let's pencil it in for Thursday at three. And if you're, you know, if he can't do that, then you, we can always change it. So I always try to, you know, while on that phone and after doing that questionnaire, definitely get that appointment set um, with them on the phone. And then um, always send some type of pre-listing packet, whether that's via email or in the mail, just depending on how much time you have. A lot of times I just email that. And um, for me, what that really does is kind of set the tone of your professionalism. It's just a, for me, um, it's just a short, and I have it up here, shortened version of my listing packet. Um, it's just a generalization of what we do to sell homes. It's nothing property specific or to them, but it then kind of, um, I think makes the listing appointment. That's how I describe it. Like what's, what's a good email address so I can send you some information on our team and what we do to sell homes. Um, to make our appointment, you know, more efficient and, uh, you know, so we can really talk about your house and, you know, focus on your house. Um, and then we're going to create the listing presentation. Like I said, we'll, we'll talk about what the, the tools we have here in command. Um, and then we're going to do the listing appointment and we'll do a walkthrough. I'll, I'll go through what I do on a listing appointment and then I can show you 
as well in that toolkit, there's a listing, there's a script for the listing appointment. So if you guys want to take that and kind of make it your own. Um, okay, so I think we've kind of talked about this, but before the appointment, um, it, this is talking about, I think you guys talked before on one of them, what an A, B, and C seller is. I think that just equates to their motivation, which you're going to find out on the question questionnaire, whether they're, you know, selling in a month, selling three months from now, or they're, you know, talking about next fall. Um, and I think every, you probably talk to different agents, you get different answers. I would still go in the appointment, even if they were next fall to establish that relationship. Um, maybe even a year out because and I, I have, and, I, and, I, and then I secured the, the listing the next time we met. But I wouldn't call it maybe a listing appointment. It's more of that, that initial conversation. Um, and it's not so much about the value of the house, but what to do to get their house ready, you know, over the next couple months, especially if they've been living in a house for 30 years and there's not that many updates, you know, giving them some advice on what they can do to, to get top dollar. And I might give them kind of a, an initial of the range and go over what we do to sell homes, but then I just stay in touch. Um, so that's what I would do. But you're, you know, obviously we do that pre-questionnaire, you, you know, uh, before you go out what their timing is, because you've discussed that. So in part of that listing pack, and I'm kind of all over the, is um, that I send out that pre-listing and I typically email that out and I make sure that they've received it. And it's a good way to get their email because sometimes when you're talking, you forget to get their email. So I always get it because I send them that pre-listing packet. But really the point of that is to, you know, state your values, um, kind of pre-sell yourself, what we're going to do to market your home, what our team does, like why you, and it saves time so that you don't. You can ask them if they've looked at it, if they had any questions. Um, and it truly does save time on the appointment. Oops. Okay, so how does the pre listing packet help you have a smooth listing appointment? Um, let me see if this is, this is one of the things I wanted to see upon. If we had, Okay, this is the toolkit again, sorry, to read over the pre-listing packet in the toolkit. I asked Elise to have this up and running. So look, this is one of the things, this again is a, should be in that Ignite toolkit, the uh, pre-listing packet. So let's see if we can find it. And all this toggling back and forth. I can't wait till we can have in-class teaching again. <laughs> or at least I should have gotten the help. So let's, let me end the share here. Um, That's the screen. Hold on, guys. Okay. So this should be it. This is the toolkit that I showed you guys before and how to get there. This might be it. Hold on. Let's see. Page down. I'm going to go faster. Hmm. Hold on, I just want to... Power session, selling your listing. Sell your listing. Um, this is not it. I must, maybe I passed it. I apologize since this was it. This is all new to me. Um, okay, so, and you guys can, like I said, I'll I'm going to show you in command. For my pre-selling, I'm going to stop the share for a second. Or am I sharing my screen? No. Let me go back here. Okay, so in my pre-listing packet, this is what, I mean, I just send out um, or email out and it's just a dear seller, you know, there's a lot of opportunity in the market to sell, kind of just um, what's in this packet, what I would include in this packet. It's just a letter from the team. And then um, this is just what's, you know, like kind of what I said, selling a, a home is one of the largest financial transactions of a lifetime. Our role is to make it process seamless as possible. I have our value proposition up here. 
Some of our stats are here. Um, the proof is in our numbers. And again, I got this all from command. So I'm, as I'm trying to go through this like toolkit and try to, you know, not finding it successfully, um, you can search there on your own later. But I think the command has a, a lot of great stuff you can put in. I have credentials and awards page. Like I said, it's a little bit different than the um, listing presentation, but um, strategic promotion. So what we do to sell homes, kind of it's in the details. These are again, just what was in command. Preparing your home, so outside, inside, it kind of gives them some bullet points on what they can do. Your responsibilities as a seller page. Um, I have this, I think we might need to update this, this is from 2020, but it's the you know, most recent fiscal year. Um, it's just saying that our market center, or with our market center stats, and then kind of like why KW is so important. So this is just a quick re, uh, pre-listing packet. If I mail it, um, I mail this, and then our folder with all the um, listing disclosures. So I have my card in here. I have a contract and disclosures. And what they're going to, you know, kind of a cover letter of what they're going to find behind here. Um, a letter to them as far as the importance of, you know, setting expectations and what they're going to get with us. Um, so if I, um, I will definitely ask them to look over all this. And again, I only send this if I have enough time to either drop it off at their house or put it in the mail. And then I always either email this or it goes in, in the mail with us. Any questions on that or Buffy or Heather, what you guys send out or what you do for your pre-listing packet, if it's, you know, in command or something else? We've created our own. Um, we don't use the, the one in command, um, but it's got really similar components. Mm -hmm. Okay. But do you guys always send something out too? Um, yeah, or we drop it off. Yeah. And this is Buffy. I don't, I don't do anything like this at all so okay. this is julie hi julie hi do you um, want to introduce yourself just because i know we we just we have capital partners in excel and just want to make sure we, we may oh, all someday so. <laughs> sure this is julie wills i um run a team um at keller williams excel realty and buffy is our new broker if anyone hadn't heard so we're thrilled yay um, i didn't know that yeah Yay. I don't know if I was supposed to say that, but I think we're loud now. We're transitioning. Are we Buffy? Did I just do something I wasn't supposed to? <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Whoops. Um, I just want to say that I, we also have created um, my team and I, our own thing. We don't call it a pre-listing packet. We call it a seller guide. That way it can be more of a soft touch as well. So even if we're warming someone up to selling, um, I can say, oh, I'm gonna proactively send you a seller guide. It'll acclimate you, um, not only to myself and my team, um, but, but what the current climate is for selling homes in today's market. Um, I, it's just a little softer, more softer vernacular, I think. Um, it's not as assumptive, just in case they're on the fence. And then of course you can close them when you get in front of them. We do email it. Um, I also bring a hard copy to every appointment. And if we happen to be meeting a buyer that we know will probably have to sell before they buy, but always want to get in front of that buyer, we also take a hard copy of our seller guide, seller guide to that first buyer's cons consultation as well, because we want to flip the tenor of that buyer consultation into a seller consulta consultation, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. Thanks. All right, now again, I think I'm on the right. I think this is the page. Okay, so the listing presentation. Um, again, I said, I think I said that the, you know, our pre-listing packet or seller's guide, I like that, I'll probably steal it, Julie, is more general, like, you know, how to prepare your house for the sale of a lifetime. Um, but then obviously the listing presentation um, is really, uh, how specific, at least I make it as I, I like to do a one and done. I know some agents do um, a two step approach and kind of go out there and maybe come back with pricing. But I am, unless it's a really unique piece of property, I like to come out and with my mindset with like a general, you know, like kind of a worst, medium, best price um, to discuss and share with the sellers. So 
my goal today is to show you what I do in command, and then we can, you know, go from there. You can ask questions, and I can show you where the listing presentation script is in the toolkit as well. Um, so let me, I think I have to stop sharing, or no, new share. We're going to go to command and to design so I can show you where the, um, I can, let's see. I'm just trying to see where my, okay, share the screen. Um, I'm gonna just type in command here. Oops. Will it open then? Oh, okay, so now I have to sign in again. I already signed in on something, but that's okay. Just Hmm. Have you guys been in designs playing around? Are you guys are you guys using it for your marketing? I went in there a little bit and played around also, like just based on the different um, meetings that I've attended, just to see if I could navigate through it. But I haven't got to use it yet. Okay. Well, here, this little paintbrush is designed, and I would love it if anybody else should, because I'm learning it. Um, we, you know, I use Canva a lot, but really, I'm learning more and more designs can do just about as much as my, you know, Canva, and you can change fonts and backgrounds and bring in your own artwork and stuff like that. So anybody else with design, anything, you know, that they're using it for? I've stuck with Canva for the most part, but um, but I think when it when command becomes more stable, I look forward to diving in there. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, we're the same. I'm, we're still weaning ourselves off of professional can Canva. We we dove into designs a, a tad, but but we still are very heavy Canva. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna try doing all command and just to, for consistency and. But um, yeah, so I'll let you know how that goes. We're just starting. So how to get to the listing presentation, I'll get back on track. You go to designs here in your, and then to print. Um, okay, see, and then, oh, create. You hit this plus button, but it, there should be, hold on, let's see if I'm going to mess this up. And then I'll go back. So I just want to show you the template, not necessarily mine. I'll show you mine too, but it's, oh, there we go. Okay. So I just hit that plus button and I can go back if I need, you know, and I hit print because technically that's what it is, you know, it's, it's under the print. And then if we go to listings, listing presentation right here. And then it gives you a couple different options as far as templates. Um, and you can just go up here and hit use. And in here you can, um, obviously you're gonna delete it, it gives you instructions on how to fill this out, but you can, um, really customize if you wanted to change this picture and you had a different image, you could go over here and you could do company, you know, and it gives you a list of like housing, interior, housing interiors here. Or like I said, if you found something um, that was like a photo stock that you could use, you could always upload your own images or if it was a, if you had a picture, interior picture of their, their house and you want to make it personal somehow, if you'd been in their house before, you can, you, can, you can swap this out real easily and make this any picture um, that you want. I can show you how real fast too. So if you're clicking on here and you just want to swap it, you just hit this replace image button and it swaps it out. So it's pretty easy and pretty user friendly. So I'll go back then just to the general pages. I can do that. Um, oh, here, pages. Wait, what happened? 
show all pages. Somehow I just see. Let's undo this. I don't know what I did. Let's go back. Let me go back out and do it. Instead of editing, I'm just going to walk you through real fast what's there, and then we can talk about the, the listing presentation. Okay, so here on this page, you can, um, you know, customize it to them, put the seller's name on it, put your logo, your broker's logo in there, your information. Um, next page, you're kind of going over, obviously you would fix that, your property tour guide, customizing marketing plan, representing your home, and you can, you know, swap any of these images and bullet points out. And what I liked about this presentation, it starts in right away with their home. Because that's what every, when I sit down with sellers, I feel like that's what they want to get into right away. Especially if you've sent the selling guide to them or pre-listing packet, you've talked with them on the phone. Um, again, I reiterate that and I'll go through mine, but they want to get into what's my house worth? How fast are you going to sell it? What are you going to do to market it? Um, kind of like that NAR pie thing that, they, you know, what, what sellers want, um, you know, as an agent. So, here, this is you cut, you know, I always import a picture if I can get it from the auditor's site. Um, you know, if I put a, or if I can take a picture of the front house before the meeting, I would do that and import it there. So it's their house. You have their address here and then all the bullets about their house. Again, that you can just get from the auditor site. Um, and then when in preparing the comps, I kind of know this. So I like that, you know, your home is 10% larger than the average property sold in Barton Hills or if that was Worthington Hills here locally, so that you're kind of letting them know how their house compares to their neighborhood, or if they're not in a neighborhood, their area of that school district, or how whatever level you're going to go out to. And you guys will talk about more of that when you get to the CMA in pricing homes um, for tonight. But I like that because you start in right away with their house. And then the next slide of this, is kind of again what's happening in their in their neighborhood or like if i've done like a farmhouse in Patascala or you know like a rural area then i, I just like what's happening in Patascala or you know within a school district or something so i make it as specific as i can um and then with this you can um and i won't get into design because i feel like obviously i'm not that great of it but you can switch this out to make it Powell or Worthington Hills or whatever area you're doing it. If there's a snapshot of it in command, you can you can switch this out. Um, but I have found that I have to key in my numbers. So here's like the average, um, I think that's average list price, average sold price. Um, and I'm finding myself now, I don't want to get into the CMAs, but I'm only going back like through October now because um, I'm finding, you know, sharing the comps and what's happening. If I go back a year, that's kind of pulling down the numbers when I'm going on listing appointments. Anybody else? I mean, I know that's not the listing appointment. I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent a little bit, but when you're sharing pricing at the selling appointment, how far back are you guys going with pricing? I think it depends on the property and if you're rural or real, um, you know, urban or suburban, right? Yeah. But ultimately, I think you're spot on. I, I don't, I sometimes I only go back three months, but there's no reason right now you should ever have to go back more than six because you know what? Ultimately, be, this would be the script I would use. At the end of the day, I have to sell your home twice. I have to sell it to the buyer and I have to sell it to the buyer's lender. And an appraiser is not going to go back more than six months with the current comparables that we have, right? So we're going to look at six months worth of inventory. Yep, absolutely. I use that script too when they're trying, you know, they try to do it uh, too high. Well, okay, let's push the market and, you know, well, we, you know, so but we won't get into that. Okay, so the next page. So I used to on mine also come with like a CMA, because I'm a numbers person. I love Excel, I love looking at numbers, I love looking at charts, but not everybody is. So instead of coming with a CMA with all the, like a printout, which is, you know, doesn't necessarily have pictures, 
we have now gone to this page and printing out several of them if need be. I mean, if it's in a neighborhood and, and 10 houses have sold, you know, since November or whatever time period that we pulled um, to deem necessary, depending if we had enough comps, I we actually then put the picture of each house in here and the address, all their, you know, whether it's three bedroom, four bedrooms, all their stats, how the days on market, what it's sold for. So we have a visual as we were talking through the pricing. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, have you been in this house? Do you, you know, um, and we'll get to that. But I love this page. And that's instead of, like I said, instead of doing the old fashioned for me, see, I would used to bring a CMA and I still do, I have it with me, but we just talk, we just stay on this um, because going this page has summarized with all this days on market um how many are active how many are pending it summarizes then then you have the pictures um so we've had the pricing discussion then it goes into kind of the marketing your needs first um and again you haven't talked about yourself or the team or anything you've talked now you've talked about their house their neighborhood specifically and now you're going into um what you know what their needs are um then you're going to talk about the process and in this like i said this is obviously you don't have to use this format but i you know and you can you guys can edit any of this take it out if i would say if you don't do something in the process i would delete it just because it's in there doesn't mean you, it has to stay or you can, if you do something additional add it um, but I, when I go through, I speak to everything on there. Like I don't use this, but you guys might, my app, um, your customized marketing plan. And again, you can swap out these pictures, but you don't, you know, I think their stuff is great, but you can customize anything here. This is not, and then finding the buyer, I just kind of, this tells them where buyers are coming from in the internet and why their photos are so important. Um, and then real estate agents. So the internet and the real estate agent are the you know biggest the majority where the buyers are coming from. Um, best in class promotional assets. So then you're going to get into your your media plan for them and what you're you know if you don't do it if you don't and this is so small but if you're not doing postcards around the neighborhood let's say do, you know delete it you know don't don't say that you do something that you're not going to do for that house. Um, but I think these are just like brochures, and I can see this in, you know, just listed, just, you know, just listed coming soon campaigns, emails that you're going to do, basically going through every, your meet the media plan with them. I'll keep scrolling. Um, again, and then what you're going to do for them during the coming soon campaign, just listed, go through this open house strategy. Um, again, if, I mean, I think this is a pretty, comprehensive thing that it states that we do, they do for open houses. So if you're not going to do it, delete it, or if you do more, it's in the details. So um, you're listing amplified, door knocking, high quality professional photographs of everything you're going to do to market them. And then here's where you can put your stats in. So now it finally, we're towards the end of the presentation and it's getting about you or your team, or your, if you don't have a team and it's you, your bro, you can put in your newer, you can put your um, brokerage stats in here. Right. And then same with the, or, or not, you know, I would definitely have some type of stats or the proof is in my numbers. See, we just updated that. We just pull a, um, our Columbus, you know, our numbers in the, the CM, we do a CMA to see what our average um, days on market is and our price points and stuff like that. So that we're always, up to date and we're not using like last year's numbers. And then how we're doing compared to the market. And you guys can get this from um, like here in our office, Joanne Rasmussen could help you pull these and how we're, you know, what the board numbers are compared to your numbers. Or maybe your team lead or someone in your office can definitely help you with this. Um, and if it's not the story that you want to tell, then I mean, I never lie, but just then, take that out. If your days on market aren't as high, but maybe your price point's higher or something, um, you know, you can always spin a story. It's not like, you know, that you're the numbers to tell the story you want. That's what I said. You can always spin the numbers to tell a story you want. Um, your credentials and awards, or maybe it's your market centers. 
Um, and then leading the industry, this is just more like the uh, Y4C2, I can't, I don't know, the win-win, integrity, customers, the Keller Williams, Y4C2K, is that it? I don't know. And then I think these are extra. Oh, this would be your portfolio if you want. We don't have this in there, so it's not a bad idea, but I guess this would be if you wanted to share, especially if it was maybe local or um, the houses you sold in that area, or maybe you just wanted all your houses that you've sold. Featured listings. Um, then you have the promise script for them. And this is a really great script to tell them, or if you get, um, you know, that you're going to, you know, give them the best service and then eight, 10 plus service for them. And kind of in return, you know, you kind of, at this point, this is when I ask for a referral on the, on the listing appointment. Um, and we can go over that. Selling safely. Um, this, you know, in the era of COVID, you can, you know, especially if that still is a concern of your seller, um, you can definitely modify this to what you do for your listings as far as shoe covers and no overlapping showings and hand sanitizers and whatever, whatever you do for your, you know, to keep your seller safe or whatever you're going to do, um, go through that with them. And then kind of just the last line last page there, and then your contact information is on the back. So any questions on this? I know it pretty quickly. Yes, I have um, two questions. I was going to ask on this, um, is there an option to convert into like either a PowerPoint or something that we can email or does it have to be? Because I know it was in print, but I was just wondering about um, any other options there. Yeah, so if you down if you hit this download button here, which I'll just do. So you should you can get it into a PDF. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I was just asking any other forms. The PDF is good too. So nothing like you could convert it into a nothing like you could convert it into a PowerPoint. Um, I'm not techie at all. I feel like there's probably a way. I mean, I feel like you can convert a PDF into Word, so I would assume you can convert it to a PowerPoint. I don't know. Does anybody else, can anybody else answer that? Because when we email, we just, I just download it and get it as a PDF and attach it as a PDF. If I'm doing it for the pre-listing or the, the seller's guide. That's what I'm emailing. I really don't email this. This is all always presented in person. Because I've done, I mean, I haven't had anybody, I guess, do a uh, virtual. I've always done mine in person with masks and everything and staying at a distance. Um, but that's not, I'm sure a lot of people have been doing Zoom listing appointments. So, yeah, but that's how you just hit download and you can select the PDF and select which pages you want and hit the download button. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anyone else? And I'll go back to mine then and kind of go through um, kind of what I do for a listing appointment. And then I'll show you guys where like the script is. Um, I mean, I guess I can go through this one. This was very close to what I, I mean, I can go through this and tell you how, how I walk through a house and what I do on an appointment. So the first thing first within a listing appointment, um, I always have, I've emailed them, you know, so I, I have their email, they have my, um, the pre-listing packet in that email. They have our confirmed appointment. So I always make a calendar request, a meeting request for them for our appointment time. And then I always call them um, the day before or the morning of, depending on when the appointment is, just to remind them of the listing appointment. So I always show up on time, never early, because they're usually preparing for you to come. If I am early, I just stay outside or drive around the neighborhood to kind of check out some of the comps in person. So, um, you know, I walk up to the door and I'm taking, you know, a ton of notes. I have a blank piece of paper and I usually, you know, have my briefcase and I'll just pull out the my you know packet here 
and I'm taking notes about their curb appeal. So I'm walking up and looking, you know, if their driveway needs to be paved or their, you know, mailbox is faded and they, they need to like repaint or, you know, their landscaping is done or there's chip paint around the windows or whatever, any note, anything that I'm, you know, catching or how the roof, the roof looks like it's in good shape. I'm just taking notes as I walk up. Um, and then obviously they answer the door, introduce myself, especially if, if I don't know them, you know, come in. And um, I usually ask if I can put my stuff down at the kitchen table and um, take a tour of the home. So now this is where it differs from other agents. Some say that, you know, some, some do it by, you know, ask if they can do it by themselves. I like to walk with these sellers myself. Um, I like, especially if I don't know them, I'm building rapport. Even if I do know them, I'm kind of, you know, catching up with an old friend or walking around, asking questions, um, asking about the updates and, you know, different things in their house. Again, I'm taking, and I tell them, I'm going to take notes. Um, and once you, you know, when you've decided to list with me, we'll go, I'll go over all my notes that I'm, you know, writing down and just taking notes on how we're going to get top dollar for your house when, um, when it does sell. So, and you, especially, you know, a lot of sellers will ask you, should I do this? Should I, should I, should I put the carpet? Should I get, you know, granite countertops? Is that going to make a difference? Um, and I let them know, you know, I don't answer, you know, in that, as I'm pouring the house, those kind of questions. I, I tell them that, you know, yep, I'm taking notes and we'll, you know, we will get to all that and I'll give you, you know, my recommendations. But I do kind of, as I'm going through the house, I'll sandwich in um, some things, just little little things like when, and I say when we list, we're gonna open up you know, the windows or the curtains to let all the light in. Or I'll suggest little tips like when we list, let's take out the screens that just makes the windows look cleaner. Um, not like, oh, we need to stage this and we're gonna move the bed here. And you know, I don't, I don't pull out all that kind of stuff, or I just kind of give them little tips, like in the bathroom, when we list, we're going to have the shower curtain open or whatever, or close if it's great, whatever. You know, so I kind of use that a couple times throughout the home tour. I'll just mention that when we list um, and kind of, you know, start building that. I don't know, it's kind of confidence. I kind of, I go in thinking I'm going to get every appointment. Um, in my head, because why wouldn't they want to list with me? I just, you know, I'm going to do the best job I can and get them top dollar and stuff. whatever their reasons were for listing on that pre questionnaire, I'm going to do that for them. So that's kind of my mindset when I walk through. So after we're done with the home tour, um, I sit down and um, I haven't, you know, I don't give them this pre listing packet just yet, but I just say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, um, my goal, I always, you know, I have three goals today, and that's to review your motivation and timeline. I, you know, I just want to make sure all of us are on the same page. Um, and I understood, you know, I'm hearing you correctly. To discuss um, and agree upon a price that will cause your house to sell. And then three, I just want to, I'm going to, we're going to go over the next steps. And if we both feel like it will be a good fit, we'll, you know, we'll talk about um, getting a contract signed and, and getting your home sold. Does that sound good? I always kind of, you know, Try, always try to weigh in throughout to ask if, if they understand or if they agree, you know, just to something. When we're talking about price, like, wouldn't you agree? Or So then I pull out, you know, I give them the listing presentation. And now with COVID, just so I stay far, I, I make sure I have two copies so that I'm not <clears throat> reading upside down since now I have so much of their numbers in front of me and I'm not sitting, you know, so close to them. So. I will give, or even three might be a good, um, not, it might not be a bad idea either, so that both sellers can have a, you know, copy in hand. Usually they're sitting by each other and just share it, but um, I definitely make a copy for myself so that I'm not reading these numbers upside down. So then when we get into it, I go over all their, you know, their house right away. And I kind of, you know, get into the pricing because the pricing is, you know, 80% of, of selling a house. I, you know, I tell them if, you know, we, you, you can tell me today, let's say it's a $300,000 neighborhood, your house is worth a million. You know, I could fly a, a plane over your house and it's not going to sell. 
right? It's, it's all about the pricing. In today's market, I kind of prep them that buyers are so savvy with all the technology. They know what your, you know, why your neighbor sold and what they sold for and, you know, all the details before even stepping foot into your door. So they truly have them or their agent um, an opinion of the price before they, they even step into your door. So I kind of, you know, go over how their house compares to the area that we're comparing, whether it's a neighborhood or a bigger um, rural area. And they always like, they always, you know, weigh in. It's just a good conversation. And then here I get into the numbers um, and I have their, you know, average sale price here. We go over the list and this usually, this is a little different, but in today's, the list versus the sold price is sold higher. So I always point that out. So that's good. You know, the homes are selling more than they listed for all the stats. And then here I usually have um, how their house, what has happened since they purchased their home. So if they're not the original homeowners, I mean, I only go back maybe to 09. I don't know. I've, I've, I've thrown out a number there, maybe 05, just to show the market. Because after that, it kind of gets irrelevant with like the, the numbers. But recently I've gone to, been selling homes that they didn't purchase that long ago, like four, maybe five years ago. So these are really fun numbers to share. The you know the, the increase in equity and how much faster the days on market have gone is what I, kind of stats I put here. And then, and in my research, I go through and truly update this. I don't, I wouldn't leave this here, but what the top, the the homes that got the top, um, you know, price per square foot. What were they looking for? Were they looking? Were they finished basements? Were they three car garages? Were they the hardwood flooring, updated kitchens? So I, you know, I bullet point what what's uh, really driving those top sales here. We kind of talk about that in comparison to their house too. So just kind of setting that expectation. We we haven't gotten to the comp yet, the specific comp yet, but kind of with this conversation, you kind of get a feel for if they're like, you know, liking the price or not. Plus in that pre-questionnaire, I, I, like I said, I, I asked them um, that Zillow question. If you, you know, Zillow says your house estimates this, how do you feel about that? Or point blank, do you have a price in mind? Um, so I, I go in knowing where they're thinking. So, um, and I would say as of late, these conversations have been easier. They're, uh, my sellers have been more surprised about, you know, what homes are selling for. Um, so the pricing conversation is going a lot more fluid. Anybody else want to chime in? I feel like I've been talking a lot on the pricing. Oh, okay. And then I get to the comparables. And I do ask them, you know, go through and, and point out pros and cons. Like this one had a dated kitchen. This one had an updated kitchen. This one had worn carpeting it stated that you know like they would the you know sellers would do a carpet allowance so we know you know so i give them details about each house that i can find on the mls whether it's in the the details like brand new roof brand new hvac updated patio whatever you know so i take a lot of notes on each house so and we talk about how that compares to their house and then i ask them Okay, if you were buying in today's market, where would you expect your house to be listed at? Where would you, you know, if you were buying and you need, you know, these comps, where would you think your house falls? And I would say 80, maybe 90% of the time, the, the number that comes out is pretty, it's pretty close to where I was thinking going into it. And like I said, when I'm doing my CMAs and my pricing before, I kind of, since I've never been in their house, um, <clears throat> going with a low, medium, best. And as I'm walking through the house, I'm determining where I think they're, they would fall. And kind of a step back on that, when I'm doing the pre-listing questionnaire, and I don't know if it was on the one that is in the toolkit, um, I do ask them, is there anything that would positively impact your house, pricing of your house that I wouldn't, be able to tell from the auditor site or your old, um, you know, listing in the MLS, and that you know, and I give them examples like, did you have you updated your kitchen or put in new flooring or 
you know, how old's your roof? So I asked them all these questions before I even stepped foot to help me with their the gauging of their house. And then I also, on the flip side, asked them if there was anything negatively that would impact their house, the pricing of their house. Um, and, you know, the, the example I give is like one time I went out and there was a big electric pole in the backyard and I had no clue. And I was like, uh, you know, so I pull up to the house, I'm just kind of like, oh crap. So that would have been something that I would hope, you know, if I had asked that question, I would hope that seller would have might have might have brought that to my attention. Um, and then I asked another, another pricing question I asked when I, you know, on the telephone call, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your house? 10 being the highest. I don't know if I've ever had anyone give me a 10. So whatever number they, they say then, well, what would what would it take to make it a 10? So you can kind of get a good gauge of you know what they think they need to do to make their, you know, like whether it's a new kitchen, oh my kitchen stated, and they might spare give you more details about like what's wrong with their house, even though I feel like sellers are more critical um, most of the time than they need to be. Does that make sense? Any questions? Okay, so, okay, whoop, was there a question? No, but I was, it's truly again, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, we have a couple of those questions. We have the seller intake sheet as well. And so we try and go over that, some of that before we get in the home to your point. So that's a good point to reiterate with everybody. I, we always kind of say, would you please just briefly describe your home for me? And that'd be like bedrooms, baths, and you know any updates or improvements you may have done to the home. Um, and then always too, I try and sneak in either when I'm walking around the home before we sit down or on the phone. Um, what are your top two favorite features of your home? Because depending on what they say there and what the neighborhood is bearing or what it will hold, I usually have an idea of what they've done, right? So I can kind of gauge from those questions where we're going to fit in that range. I like that. And do, Julie, because of that, do you find, do you do a one-step approach? Are you talking about pricing when you go on a listing appointment? Pretty much. And I'm going to tell you, here's kind of my philosophy on pricing. If it's a cookie cutter, right, neighborhood, you know, it, it doesn't matter if they have gold leafing around their dining room. I mean, they, they're still going to be in that range. Do you know what I mean? I, I know what the neighborhood is going to, is going to bear. So um, did I cut out? I'm sorry. I was getting a call. I'm on my phone. No, um, so I, I try and have a range in my mind, meaning a low of what I think their home is going to be and a high. And when I'm doing that walk around, I can pretty much spot on think, okay, when I'm talking to them, I'm going to be at the lower end. Do you know what I'm saying? And then I'm just going to feel them out. And, and I don't think whether you're a new agent or a seasoned agent, one, one piece of sage advice, and I'm sure all the other seasoned agents on the call would say the same thing. Don't be afraid. I mean, pricing and, and, and all of this, it's a conversation and it's a partnership. Don't be afraid to take notes. Don't be afraid to talk through list price and talk the comparables. You know, ultimately at the end of the day, you know, um, I don't price your home and you don't price your home. The market will price your home. So don't get flustered over price because it's, it's ultimately a conversation and a partnership and you don't have to agree on an exact price that second. You know, I like the one step approach, but I can always put TBD in that listing agreement. And as we go down the road, we can agree upon that later. So don't forget that either. Don't get, don't get flustered over that. If you're new. That is a great point. That's I definitely have done the TBD where you just, you don't know, like, you know, it might be a harder one, not the cookie cutter or the seller may take it, or you may be far out, right? You might not exactly. Be That's what I was exactly so. going to say. If they're three months or six months down the road and we're not sure, and this is initial, an initial meeting, you know, focus more on the value you're going to bring to them and how you're going to guide them through the process. Because, you know, Hey, the, these comps could change. The comparables could change as the market shifts. And, and since we're really not going to be ready till fall, let's just kind of back into a game plan of how we're going to present properly. And the, and the, that pricing will probably ultimately change. I can give you an idea of what your neighborhood is going to bear today, but obviously we're going to keep a pulse on that very closely as we walk towards, towards presenting your home to market. Sure. Yeah. Anyone else? Want to add that? Okay, and I can't see it. So from here, 
you know, so whether we agreed on a price or, you know, so, so I always say, so it sounds like we're in agreement of a range at least, or, you know, whatever, or if it's, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller to Julie's point, we're not selling, you know, we're, we're a month out and in this market, um, you know, we could get a couple new comps then, and, you know, I'm going to pull the comps right before we list and make sure that we're all in alignment. It's always your decision. You know, I'm here to give you my expert advice and what's going on the market and how to get top dollar um, based on your strategy and your wants. But, you know, you can always, I just kind of like conclude this part of the converse, the pricing conversation, you know, as far as like, yes, sounds like we're in agree agreement on, you know, this is the range of your house or we're going to table it and we'll pull it, you know, the comps again and go over this right before, uh, you know, we list it. So I move on. And I'll be 100% honest, I don't have this page in mind. I don't know if this is new since we developed, but I like it. Your needs come first. Visualize your dream scenario for selling. Um, I, and maybe I'm, I'm going to switch this and I'll just be upfront and honest. I do at the promise page, that was towards the end of the packet. You know, I kind of, I stop and say, okay, if I could wave a magic wand, um, what is the perfect transaction? What does this transaction look like for you? And I just let them talk and listen to that, whether, you know, most of the time it's selling it quickly or getting the best, netting the most, but sometimes it's not. So you just have, really have to listen. Um, maybe they're really nervous that this was COVID and people being in their house. So, um, you know, take a lot of notes and then tailor that conversation about how you're going to um, meet those needs. So I'm going to flip this. I like it. But then I get into the process. Um, and, you know, always ask if this is, and you probably, you'll know this before you go out too, is if, if this is their first time selling or if it's been a while, I definitely make sure to go over kind of step-by-step step in what we do or what I do, um, you know, maybe a little bit differently. I think, again, this is a really small page and I should have it memorized because I've gone over it enough, but like the appraisal process is one of the steps here. Um, so I don't just say, oh, then the appraiser is going to come out to the house. I say. And I'm going to either, not in COVID, I haven't, but I used to meet the appraiser out there and definitely have an appraisal packet. But I, I, you know, I tell them, I don't just rely on the appraisal to pull the comp. I'm going to provide the appraiser, if you've got multiple offers, you know, give them the, the first sheet. I'll black out all the details. If there are any, you know, personal information, buyer information on there, send them the first sheet of every offer you got to show them the market value of your house. We're going to send them a list of the updates that we provided to the buyers of your house um, and all the, you know, the comps that we used here today to price your home. And if anything else has closed and sell, you know, that is what we do to help our sellers. Because um, yes, all, you know, the, the appraiser is for the buyer, but that's going to, you know, we don't want a low appraisal and we don't want to have that um, hiccup in the process. So we're going to, you know, I, I do the very best we can. I say we because I have a team. So we're going to do, you know, everything we can to make sure this is a smooth transaction for all parties involved. And that's just one of the things. So I go through each bullet and kind of customize it, but I don't, I, I have this exact page. I might've deleted something from here. I don't know. because, Like I said, it's so small, but I speak to every bullet. And then, sorry, my, this mouse is so, I don't use the app. Then I get into, I do share this. Um, because when I talk about like what the internet and why your first pictures and I get into staging and how we we provide a staging consultation that's just my team you don't have to do that maybe you're I'm like I said I'm a numbers person so for me the visually I know what I like but I can't I don't have the ideas I'm not skilled enough to tell somebody else what to do with their house and how to get it ready um I can kind of give the basics but if they do need staging I will you know we will do that and um we talk about that staging consultation and then the professional photos and why they're so important and why how the internet is really your first showing. That is what your pictures and your marketing are working to, are going to bring buyers to your house and why it's so important. So then we get into the marketing plan. I do have these pages in mind, but again, I customize them to their miniature pictures of our brochures that we use and a just listed, you know, direct mail or an email that we send out. So you can customize these um, and then outline things that you do. If you, you know, spend a lot on social media ads, you're sending ads out through command, if you can, 
you know, state numbers, or maybe you can use your broker's numbers if you're a newer agent, but like the average Facebook ad that we send out generates so many leads and are so many clicks. So you guys can, you know, use those numbers and I don't put them in here, but I speak to them and why it's so important in what we do. Any questions on that? Um, and then I go through what we do to, you know, the coming soons and if we, you know, if that's a strategy we want to do, if we can get pictures soon enough and put it in the MLS of the coming soon. And because um, now there's no more delayed showings. So this, you know, putting it in the coming soon and kind of generating that buzz around uh, the house, that, you know, maybe the week prior to um, it listing and, you know, in talking about a strategy as far as like, what day you're going to put it in the MLS and when you're going to do, uh, sh when it's, when's it going to go active, which will be the same day that it's also showing start when you're going to do the open house and, you know, kind of setting the stage for everything that you guys, you or your team's going to do as far as the, maybe your reverse prospecting, um, you know, sending it to all the agents that have their search, this house would fall into their search criteria, letting them know that this house is coming on the market or, what when it is in the coming soon in the MLS, um, or your um, I'm trying to think of all the stuff that we you know all the emails and emails to other buyers agents and letting them know about the house. So um, everything you do for your marketing, we outline it in here. And then open house strategy. I love open houses. <laughs> I've had and I can genuinely say I've had open houses that have sold the house. Um, you know, a lot of times, especially pre-COVID they'd walk through with their agent and maybe they'd still do it COVID, but, um, you know, they walk through the agent and they come back to the open house to, you know, maybe bring a family member to get a second set of eyes and they see how many people are at the open house and they then, you know, made a crazy offer on it. Um, and I know that because they signed in at the open house and then I see the offer come through and it, you know, it's that buyer. So, um, you know, I genuinely tell them, you know, sometimes I get pushed back or, oh, that's just to get buyers or do we really need to do an open house? And it's always the seller's decision. I never push it, but I just kind of outline, um, you know, what we do to generate the most traffic um, and get the most buzz. And I've also had neighbors that have brought the buyer to open houses. So I let them know that too. You know, it's a great way to, um, you know, bring a buyer that might not have had, you know, known about your house otherwise. To it um it's in the details so just again everything that you're going to do this says eye catching yard sign um amplifying your listings this is all the social media stuff you're going to do around it the professional photography what maybe you do it maybe it's a um a large piece of property or a unique lot you're going to do drone pictures um door knocking you're going to you know door knock around the open house and invite the you know tell the neighbors about it so whatever you're going to do, but if you're not going to door knock, if it's a rural neighborhood and that, you know, the five acre lot, you're probably not going to be door knocking. I would, you know, delete that out. So we do truly customize each um, listing packet. It's simple. Once it's saved, you can just go in and edit or add um, to do. And then here's where you put uh, your, you know, information about you, your picture. This is really easy to update. Like if you're a newer agent, I would put the stats in of your, your brokerage. Um, and then, and you know, why that's important or, you know, Keller Williams. And I, I, I say a lot, you know, about the, you know, how we, in 2020, we had number one market share. So um, with listings, with the kind of the uh, market exclusive waiver, you can ask your broker about that if you don't know what that is, but you can start talking about the listing before it's even in the MLS, is it coming soon with agents in your office? So because we have one of the largest brokerages in Columbus with, you know, we have almost 230 some agents in our office, I get to start talking about your house and, you know, they do a lot of business in the Worthington and the areas that we sell. So um, that's kind of another perk and, you know, something that would be kind of in this box too. We're not, you know, talking about that. And then your numbers here, I think I've talked about that. So, and I just kind of quickly, but I, I, I do go over these, but I, you know, I, I, again, it's not the focus. It's just more to um, 
kind of solidify and show the your our experience. Um, but then I go to this. No, then I go to the promise script. I'm sorry, I don't have these other pages in my listing. Um, and that's where I say, you know, our goal is to make this the most. Uh, you know, I say that magic wand thing. If I can, what does this look like? And how our goal is to make this a really smooth transaction for you know for your family. And I don't take it lightly. Again, that this is probably one of the biggest financial transactions, um, you know, of your life and you, maybe your buyers too. So, um, and I you know go through some of these bullet points. And then at the end, I kind of say, I hope you know you'll be so after this. My goal is that you'll be so compelled to uh give us a referral you know because of your experience what you've experienced with our team you'll be you'll be compelled to tell your family and friends about us something like that i do a much better job when i'm doing it live like i said the listing the appointment is my favorite part of this job and then that's really it then i kind of close it and so as i close it you know i usually you know ask them if they have any questions um and I've gone through, I, I know I went through the process really fast, but I've gone, and maybe I should go over it slower with you guys, because this is probably the pricing, and then this page are the two pages I stay on the longest, just to make sure they understand, you know, and I, I explain the timeline, you know, by the time they get an offer, by the time they close here, it's typically about 30 days. And through that, I'm explaining every, piece of the process of happening um, in that transaction to get it through that 30 days. And if they have any, and they usually do have questions. Like one question will be the buyer pays for the inspection, right? Yep, you know, that's their right um, to, you know, it's, you know, part of the contract, they may waive it, likely they won't, you know, it's, it's you know, rare that they do, um, but it's their, you know, it's part of the contract that they have. It's, and I tell them, you know, typically they put seven to 10 day, days, calendar days to have their inspection. They can have anything they want inspected. Um, that night I explained showing times through them. So we have a, you know, we have a system called showing times and, um, the, the buyer will, the buyer's agent will select a time. You're going to approve it or decline it. Hopefully you're going to approve as many as you can. There's going to be no overlapping showings. Um, if you want, it's always their choice that they approve overlapping showings. That is, you know, up to the seller. And then, you know, just, you know, let the buyer's agents know that that's happening. Um, but anyway, so, I, you know, I explain all of our, I think that's a benefit, the showing time service versus agents that don't have, you know, a service like that. But I, you know, I'm explaining each step um, of the process. And again, you know, after this, I ask them if they have any questions, but it, at the end, I'm wrapping it up. Do you have any questions? Um, you know, I feel confident I can get your home sold by blank and have you guys in Florida. Do you, you know, do you feel confident I can get your home sold? Yes. Okay. Well, the next steps are to, um, you know, the listing paperwork I sent here. And I always, I try to always get that listing paper, the contract signed. And to Julie's point, even if we write in TBD for price, if we haven't landed on it. And I come with the, um, all the listing paperwork already pre-populated. And if they do, if they, you know, they say yes, say, okay, great. And I pull out the contract first and I go over the contract with them. Um, because this is the one thing I don't want to, I don't want to like then email it out to them or DocuSign or dot loop. I always make sure I get this sign and then the um, consumer guide and the office exclusive sign there. And then the other paperwork, I give them their option to, you know, if they want to fill that out electronically um, and send it back to me, but I do go over it with them. So, um, you know, I would have the consumer guide and I explain it to them. I have the, um, and there's classes on going over all this. I know Lori teaches a bunch of like the contracts and stuff like that. So um, I don't want to, you know, take this time to go, go through all that, but I fill this out, have them, these are the three things that I, you know, if they're, yes, we feel confident you can sell, we're gonna list. Um, even if they're far away, I like, you know, far out, like let's say they're two or three months out from listing, I would just put a longer um, contract date. And I always let them know that they can, um, you know, cancel with me if they're, you know, if they decide not to sell, if they're not stuck in a contract with me. If they, you know, all of a sudden, oh, we're not moving to Florida anymore. Um, 
you know, so I explain how I work and how our team operates. Um, but I try to get this done and I, I tell them because of the office exclusive, I can start marking your home and you can kind of get a gauge on maybe price point then in, in the, the need. Obviously in this market with the inventory being so low, the need's high, but they typically, they like that idea. I've never had anyone say, no, I'm going to wait until we're closer. They know they're listing with you. I mean, I've, I, I have had pushback on getting these three things signed. And then again, we'll revisit the price. I usually have that, you know, TBD in the price point. Um, and then I explain definitely the residential property disclosure form, lead-based paint to them, because I feel like that's the one people have the most questions on. So if they opt to fill it out electronically, I, I at least explain um, that it's a legal document. They need to answer it and disclose everything to the best of their knowledge and just read each question. Um, and like I said, answer to the best of their knowledge. And if they have any questions, they can call me. But I would say most of my sellers um, I don't know, I'd say 70% like to fill it out electronically, the rest of it. Any questions on that? And how I, that's how I close. And then, um, because 70%, and I would think that that's about right. I mean, 70% are warm leads. I don't get a lot of, um, seller objections, really. You know about the commission or the um you know we're, we're list we're interviewing another agent um that obviously does come up but i would say i'm pretty cl close with the nar stat as far as the it's friends and neighbors past client referrals um that i don't have a ton of ob objection handlers but that's when you know obviously before they sign they're going to ask you questions like that, maybe about your commission, it might be the most common. Um, and I was going to show you guys, there's a script page in here, Ignite Script Book, and it does have um, seller objection handlers, I think, in here. And I think this would be a good idea for the newer agents, you know, maybe get within your brokerage and see um, if you can find a script partner. Here's lead generation scripts. I think there were calling for referrals. I'm positive there are seller obje objection handlers in here. Oh, there's the listing presentation script. So if you guys want to practice one, I mean, you could take this and make it your own. If it doesn't, you know, so um, goals for today's listing appointment kind of outlines. All right. I'm sure after this, there's probably the objection handlers. Seller objections. We need an agent with more experience. So here's it's telling you. Um, I would say what we learned from Bold and I like was always to isolate the objection, right? So if they said, um, you know, we need an agent with more experience, maybe combating. Well, other than needing someone with more experience. Is there anything, any other reason you would list with me today? No, we just, and then, you know, but if I would go into the listing appointment, um, I haven't had that one. We need to think it over. That's what, you know, because a lot of people don't want to, they may not want to sign on this, you know, spot right there. That, that would be a good one. Other than needing to think it over, is there any other any other reason you wouldn't list with me? No, no, we no, because they, they they agree on price. So you're isolating that. Okay, so I hear you saying you want to be confident. If you are 100 percent confident in me, you wouldn't bring this up. You know, you can so you if you knew I was going to do everything, you'd sign. The truth is you can never know that. Come on, let's sign the agreement. And now that you can you can know that you can cancel with me with any time, you're not satisfied. So I, I would kind of spin that a little bit too. I would probably do if we need to think about it. Okay, well, other than thinking about it, is there anything else you wouldn't, you know, anything else I haven't covered or any other reason you wouldn't list with me? No, we just want to, okay, well, you know, I'm here today. And like I said, I can start marketing your home um, right away. You can start getting those, you know, that material. I mean, we might have a buyer in our office that needs to buy tomorrow. Um, if you, you know, you let's, why don't we sign the listing agreement? Just those three documents. Well, you're going to need the consumer guide no matter what, but let's sign the two documents. And, you know, if you guys think about it and you decide, you know, you don't want to move forward, 
you can always tear it up and um, or tell me I'll tear it up and I'll mail it back to you. How does that sound? So then that way I don't have to come back out. We can get started. I can get started marketing your home tomorrow. So I would, um, you know, go through these because these are obviously the most common objections that you're going to get and make sure in practice so that it just flows out of you um, when you do get an objection. Julie, do you have any, or is she on here still? I don't know. Maybe not. Anybody have um, objections they've gotten recently? Nope. All right, any questions or any, you want any, know where I got any of the stuff? You, did everybody take notes as far as where the toolkits were? And, I think I put it in the chat room. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so people had to leave. Okay. Well, um, I'm gonna put. I'll put in here my phone number. If you guys have any questions, an email, you can feel free to reach out to me. Um, happy to help because that's one of the reasons I joined Keller Williams because I felt the culture and everybody was so willing to share with me. So if you have any questions as you start putting your listing packet together, um, definitely reach out and let me know. My email is here. Thanks, guys. I'm going to end it.